Microsoft Azure is one of the most popular cloud computing platforms in the market and the exam AZ104 is one of the most sought after certification in Microsoft stack. Passing this exam will validate your expertise in Azure administration and enhance your career opportunities in cloud computing. Hello and welcome back to the Tech Blackboard. In this video, together we will go through 10 very important and latest questions on AZ104 and we will also go through some documentation and not to forget during this course you will also understand plenty of Azure concepts. So let's begin part 7 with question number 41 but first let's check out the instructions. The instruction says that this question is a part of a series of questions that presents the same scenario. And each question in the series contains a unique solution that might meet the stated goal and some of the question set might have more than one correct solution while the others might not have a correct solution. And after you have answered this question in this section, you will not be able to return to it. As a result, these questions will not appear in the review screen. So basically my friends, when you attempt these kind of questions, there will be multiple questions in the same set. So you can see the question will be the same, but the solutions will be different. But the catch is in these kind of questions, you cannot mark these questions as review later and visit them once again. So that's why you have to be very cautious with these kind of questions. Do them very carefully because you won't get any second chance. So let's read the question. Question says that you need to ensure that an Azure Active Directory user named admin1 is assigned the required goal to enable the traffic analytics for an Azure subscription. Now the solution given is that you assign the network contributor role at subscription level to admin1. Does this meet the goal? Yes or no? And the correct answer my friends is yes. So network contributor is the correct role that you should assign to the admin1 in order to enable traffic analytics for this user at subscription level. But can the network contributor the only role to ensure that the user is able to do traffic analytics for an Azure subscription? No, there are plenty of variations of the same question. Stick around in this video as I reveal more variation. So here comes one more variation of the same question. Instructions are same. Question is same. Let's read the solution. Solution says that you assign the traffic manager contributor role at subscription level to admin 1. Does this meet the goal? Yes or no? And the correct answer this time my friends is no. This is not the correct role that you should assign at admin 1. This role traffic manager contributor role is not the correct role to be assigned to admin 1 so that it is enabled to do the traffic analytics for Azure subscription. Now let me give you one more variation of the same question. So here comes the question number 43. Question exactly same. Let's read the solution. Solution is that you assign the reader role at subscription level to admin 1. Does this meet the goal? Yes or no? And once again, this is also not the correct role. That's why no is the correct answer. So are these three questions or three variations are the only variations of this question? No, I have one more. See, generally in the real exam, you will only get three questions in one set. But I have one more variation and that's very interesting one. Let's read it out. So here it comes. Question number 44. Question exactly same. Let's read the solution. Solution says that you assign the owner role at subscription level to admin 1. Does this meet the goal? Yes or no? And yes, my friends, this is also one more role that can very well solve this business case. That's why this is also a correct solution. And that's why yes is the correct answer. So I hope you understood there are two roles. The first one is owner role and second one is network contributor role. Both can resolve this business case. Let me take you to the Microsoft documentation and show where you can read all about these roles. So here is the documentation. Here you can read Azure built in roles. And you can read here that Azure Role Based Access Control, which is also popularly known as Azure RBAC, has several Azure built in roles that you can assign to users, group, and service principles and manage identities. And scrolling just a little down, you will reach to this section. Here you can read all about these roles. First one we have contributor, then we have owner, then we have reader. So similarly, you can read all about these roles in this documentation. The link is right there in the description box. And now that we are talking about Azure roles or Azure RBAC roles, why not take some more questions on the same and strengthen our understanding. So here it comes. Question number 45. Question says that you have an Azure subscription that contains a user named user1. 
Now you need to ensure that user one can deploy virtual machines but not manage virtual network. Please note this is very important line here that the user one should be able to deploy virtual machines but he should not be able to manage virtual networks. Further the question says that the solution must use principle of least privilege which role based access control or RBAC should you assign to user one. Your options are owner, option B, virtual machine contributor, option C, contributor and option D, virtual machine administrator login and the correct answer for this question is option B, virtual machine contributor. Now in the last question I have already given you the documentation but let me summarize this for you. So here you can see we have four major type of roles here. First one is owner and owner can manage all the aspects of a subscription including access management. Granting this role would give user one complete control over the subscription which is more than necessary and violates the principle of least privilege. That's why we have not chosen owner role but in some question owner role might be the only option. So that's why read the owner role in more details. Let's move on to the other roles. Here we have virtual machine contributor and this roles allows you to manage the virtual machine but it does not allow you to manage virtual network or storage account. And that makes this user role most fit for this question. Moving on we have contributor and this role allows the users to manage all Azure resources except access management. And lastly at number 4 we have virtual machine administrator login and this role allows the users to manage virtual machines including resetting the passwords and managing operating system updates. So all in all my friends Azure access management are back roles are very important sections and most definitely you will get some questions from this area. So please go through the documentation provided in description box. Now let's move on one more question on access management. Here it comes question number 46 question says that you are configuring Azure Active Directory authentication for an Azure storage account named storage one. Now you need to make sure that members of a group named group one can upload files by using Azure portal and the solution must use the principle of least privilege. And please note that each correct answer presents the part of the solution and each correct selection is worth one point. And your options are storage account contributor, option B storage blob data contributor, option C contributor, option D reader and option E storage blob data reader. So my friends could you guess the right answer well the first correct option is option B storage blob data contributor and the second correct option is option D reader. Now I'm pretty sure that you have noticed that these roles are pretty different from the ones we learned in the last questions and that's why it calls for the validation of the answers. Let's go to the documentation. And here's the documentation with title assign an Azure role for access to blob data. Let's scroll a little bit more and we will reach to this section which says assign an Azure role. And here in this section you can read to access blob data in Azure portal with Microsoft Entra credentials a user must have the following role assignments. Here you can read a data access role such as storage blob data reader or storage blob data contributor. And if you remember the question correctly we have both the options we have storage blob data reader and we also have storage blob data contributor. And I have selected this one but you can also select storage blob data reader. But does that mean you don't have to select the reader role? No that's not true. You have to select the reader role because as the documentation says that Azure resource manager reader role is at the minimum. And here you can also read that the reader role in Azure resource manager permits user to view the storage account resources and then I want to bring your notice to this last line here which says the reader role is necessary so that the users can navigate to the blob containers in Azure portal. So my friends in a nutshell the reader role is a must because it is the reader role that allows you to navigate to the blob containers in Azure portal and then you should give the other roles as the need applies. Now let's change the gears and do some other type of questions. Here it comes question number 47 and the question says that your Azure subscription contains the Azure storage account. Now you need to create an Azure container instance named container one that will use Docker image name image one. Now this image one contains a Microsoft SQL Server instance that requires persistent storage. Now you need to configure a storage service for container one. What should you use? And the given options are option A Azure files, option B Azure blob storage, option C Azure queue storage and option D Azure table storage. And the correct answer is option A Azure files. 
and we can validate our answer in this paragraph here you can read it says with the azure file storage plugin we can mount the azure file storage shares as directories on your host file system and make it available to containers which can now all make the use of docker volume created through the plugin and as always all the documentation is right there in the description box and now let's move on to the question number 48 and this is the same kind of question with which we open this episode but the solution given here would be different and of course you have to pick the correct solution so the question says that you have an azure virtual machine named vm1 now vm1 was deployed by using custom azure resource manager template named arm1.json now you receive a notification that vm1 will be affected by the maintenance and you need to move vm1 to a different host immediately what is the solution the solution is that from the overview blade you move the virtual machine to a different subscription does this meet the goal yes or no and the correct answer is no because this is not the correct solution so let's find out the correct solution so here it comes question number 49 question exactly is the same but with a different solution what's the solution this time it says from the redeploy blade you click redeploy yes or no does this meet the goal and yes friends this is the correct solution that's why yes is the correct answer now please allow me to explain this see when you redeploy a virtual machine it moves the virtual machine to a new node within the azure infrastructure and then powers it back on and this will retain all your configuration options and associated resources and as the solution given here you can use the azure portal select the virtual machine you want to redeploy and then select the redeploy option or the button in the setting blade and just hang on with me i have one more variation of the same question and then i will give you the right documentation to validate the answer so here it comes question number 50 question once again exactly is the same let's read the solution the solution says that from the update management blade you click enable does this meet the goal yes or no and this time my friends this is not the correct solution that's why no is the correct answer now let's validate the answer on this documentation here you can see that you can go to the azure portal and then you have to select the virtual machine that you want to redeploy and then my friends as the second step in the help section you select redeploy plus reapply and then select the redeploy to migrate it to new azure host and you can of course read the entire process everything is given here i will leave the documentation link in the description box and you know what friends when i was recording this video i found a very similar question but in a different question format the question format is mcq or multiple choice question but that that i will take in the next episode so my friends are you missing something you missed to press the subscribe button and a small cute little button the bell icon there so that you get the timely notifications of all our upcoming videos as i bring multiple videos and shots every week so do tune in and also consider watching the previous episodes of this az104 series please give this video a thumbs up because this is the only way for us to expand and reach wider audience and that's all for today i will see you in the next video till then stay fit keep learning and thanks for watching